Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide. Remarkable has just released the update 2.8 for the Remarkable 2 and Remarkable 1. I've got it now on my Remarkable 2, so let's check out the new features. This is not a huge update, there's only a couple of features here, but they are useful. And I'm actually liking this type of a focus where, uh, yeah, they're not massive updates, but what you do release is regular and it is useful. So unlike the updates that we had back in 2020, in 2021 Remarkable seems to have uh, finally gotten a hand around uh, yeah, the, the, the updates to the platform and update 2.8 reflects that. So the main thing that we've gotten here is uh, the ability to merge layers. In this video I'm gonna use the opportunity to explain just a little bit uh, a recurring question that I've seen on Remarkable Facebook, Reddit and some other places where uh, every so often a new user comes in and says I'm really confused about layers, what are they for? So this is a good opportunity to kind of go through that a little bit. It's just two things in this update. So we got merge layers which we're gonna explore and then we also have the ability to finally um, uh, the device will remember your pen settings. So your favorite pen every time. Notebooks will now remember the last writing tool you used every time you open a new one, which means that the brush type, thickness and the color will all retain. So let's test the features. All right, so uh, the layers are basically, you can think of them uh, as transparent foils that go on top of your notebook, shall we say, and that you're able to draw on them. They allow you to have uh, written notes or parts of your drawings in a layered way. So what does that mean? Well, let's just make a very simple example. So the layers are accessed, of course, here, and we always have our base layer, which is the template. So that's something where you actually choose your template. No, we're not gonna go into that now. But then we have layers on top of that base layer. And just for those who don't know, we do have the ability to long press on the layer name and then we can just name it uh, the way we want to. So this is going to be my box because I'm going to draw a box here. And now let's draw a little box here. Okay, something like this. There we go. So that's my box. Now I'm going to uh, add another layer and I'm going to use that layer to fill that box with objects that are inside of the box. So some circles and triangles and stuff. So let's rename this one as inside. Okay, I don't know what happened. A little bit of bugginess here, but let's try again. A bit slower maybe. Inside. There we go. And there we go. So now it works. Uh, okay, the E is gone. Okay, some bugging is there, but mm, it's holding on. And you can always cha uh, uh, change between which layer you are on. So I can just tap on the layer that I want, and I want to be on the layer on inside. So let's now draw some stuff inside the box. So we're going to draw a circle, a triangle, another big circle, a couple of circles here. Maybe another box within a box and some squiggly stuff here. Okay, so we filled the box with some uh, items and now you have these icons on the side, the visibility of the layers. And that's another uh, really, really cool feature that the layers have, which is the ability to hide or unhide layers individually. So now I can show only the insides of the box or just the box or both together. So now let's add one more layer and we're going to call this one the outside. And you've probably deduced that this is going to be objects outside of the box. So let's just again rename it outside and it will become very clear why am I doing this? Why am I showing the layer exa uh, examples with a weird thing like this? Just stick with me. I have an outside layer. Yes, I'm on the outside layer and I'm just going to add some objects here. Mickey Mouse ears maybe some fluffy sideburns and some objects here just to kind of make things funky. Let's add another one here. 
Alright, so this is weird, right? This is <laughs> weird in itself, but there is a reason behind the madness. One of the main problems that we've had up until the update 2.8 is that if you would have made a drawing like this in layers and then you wanted to, let's say, copy it or uh, scale it and reposition it on a page, you would end up with a problem. And the problem is that the selection tool, tool the marquee tool, uh, doesn't, let's clear the clipboard, doesn't uh, have the ability to multi-select layers. So what does that mean? So if I select all of this, right, and now I want to move it, I'm just moving my current layer. And that's a problem. And up until now, you did not have an option to modify all of the layers together. You still don't, but you have a workaround for it. This is where the ability to merge layers comes into play. This function will actually merge the outside layer to the inside layer and they will become one. So let's tap the button and see. Okay, it's done that. So now if I do my selection, we should have the outside and the inside move and the box stay still. And that's exactly what we're having. So, so far so good. So now let's undo a little bit more because I want to do something afterwards. So now I've undo it twice. That's why I have the outside layer. So I'm just going to merge it back down and merge all of the layers down to the base layer here. And that finally gives me the ability to select my multi-layered drawing and then reposition it where I see fit, rotate or do what you will. Now, of course, this applies to text as well, but it was mainly the layers are mainly uh, uh, focused on the drawing side of things. All right, so now let's undo all of this and I want to show you a little trick or just a workaround. So I've undoed all the way back to the outside. So now I have three layers. And often you don't want to lose your core work. So I don't really want to lose my uh, uh, three layers here of this absolute masterpiece of the box with the inside and the outside objects. But what I actually can do is uh, maybe I would like to merge all this down and then copy it and paste it on a new layer so that I have all of the three blocks and a separate one, which is all just the merge down uh, uh, ability. So the way that you would do that is uh, you need to follow like uh, precisely steps. So you can't really just mix and match. So you have to be in the state where you have all of your layers still uh, present. So now I'm first going to merge them down to the box. I'm going to select this. I'm going to press copy. Now I'm not going to paste anything yet. Now I'm going to hit undo twice, three times, or basically I'm going to hit undo until I have my layers back. So I'm undoing the merging, but in my transform tool, in the uh, clipboard of the transform tool, now I have the multi selection, the merge down selection, it's still there in the memory, as it says, copied to clipboard, right? So all I need to do now is I'm just going to add another layer. I'm just going to call it merged. And now I'm going to exit. And now when I tap anywhere, I have my drawing. And what I can do is now I can just place it anywhere I want go back to layers, hide my segmented layers and continue working on the merged one. So this way I uh, preserve all of the hard work that went into drawing this box and this masterful objects inside and outside of the box. But you still have the ability to kind of backtrack. You can come back to it. You can uh, reuse the elements from it if you need to. And you have the ability to use the merged result as well. Now, the second part of the update, let's just test it out in several notebooks and see if it retains it. And I can just keep it in um, two notebooks, for example. So um, here I am going to use a a um, calligraphy pen that is thick and the color gray. Okay, so here I'm just gonna uh, write this 
is my chosen pen, right? I just make it pretty. Cool. Now I'm going to exit. I'm gonna make a new notebook. Yeah, it's fine. So it's like pen test. Okay. Uh, we're gonna create this. And in here, you can see actually that it remembered my last tool in the new notebook. That is, I think, quite uh, kind of cool. But it didn't remember everything. It has thin thickness and whoa, that was that was weird. <laughs> so it's a little kind of buggy. At first, it just showed it didn't show the colors and it just showed the thin thickness. And now it figured it out. And now we have the full on. I didn't actually tap on anything. It just retapped on the stroke. Now it has thick and gray. So I created a new notebook and the system remembered my default pen. So that's kind of cool. Um, and now I can decide like, OK, but in this pen, I would like to or this notebook, I would like to use a medium fine liner that is black. Now, let's see here. Does it remember per brush? Yes, it does. That's kind of cool. Now, let's uh, write a little bit. So this is my fine liner for the notebook. Okay, get out of this, go back to quick sheets and see. Yes, it does remember. It, need, it knows that it's a calligraphy pen, the last that I used. And I go here, and I go to pen test, and it knows that it's a fine liner. So this is very, very sweet. And it may seem like a very small update, but for people who are actually using the device, I think that they will understand how big of a uh, difference this will make. So that's update 2.8 for the Remarkable platform. As far as I understand, as every previous uh, update, it should come to the Remarkable One tablets as well. Though usually that comes a little bit later after the rollout for the Remarkable 2 has finished. Is it a massive game changer? No, but I really, really think that this is a very, very useful and a powerful update. Both of these features, even though there's only two features, both of them are valuable and none of them are just content filler. So update 2.8 for Remarkable 2, two thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe and ding the notification bell to get notified when new videos on my deep guide are coming out. Also check out in the link down below my daily organizer for 2021. That's a organizer per calendar year that allows you to organize your year, month, week, quarter, day, things and it has a daily diary and all sorts of things. So just check out the playlist uh, in the link down below in the description and watch those videos to actually see is this a product that will fit your needs or not. And I just want to address one of the main questions that always pops out. Is this valid for 2022? No, this is, as I said, per calendar year much like a um, physical organizer is. The reason behind it is that every new uh, version of My Daily Organizer, so My Daily Organizer for 2022. It will have new features, fixes, updates, improvements, and all of that kind of stuff. It will be a new product that needs to be purchased for the next year. But if you are an existing customer, you will have a substantial discount when purchasing the next version. So that's kind of the model how it works. And depending on how my recovery of the shoulder actually goes, um, I'm expecting to or planning to get the My Daily Organizer for 2022 ready by early September. So that's the short update on that one, just kind of slotting it in here. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy and see you in the next video. Bye.